happen. So I, I'm Jane Nelson, a school, school board uh, chair, and, um, as, and we'll talk more about why each of us is here as we get into this. And uh, to my left is Dr. Bob Godomsky. He's our superintendent of schools. Um, Good evening, everybody. Welcome. And I'll, 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 I'll introduce the SAU staff. <laughs> <laughs> Melinda Sullivan, who um, really does a great deal at the SAU office itself, but is also a, a premier minute taker. And we, we didn't want to charge anyone who actually needed to be involved with what we're talking about and doing here uh, with taking minutes. And the school board had anticipated that we might have some expenses related to this process. So we're, um, Melinda has graciously agreed to Thank you. You're welcome. That's Hired on as our, as our minute. It's, it's big. And I'll let the rest speak for yourself. I'm Erin Kavanaugh, also on the school board. Jen Lentz. I am a, I a member of the community. <laughs> um, I also have a fifth grader, um, Connor, in um, RGS, and also a 21-year-old stepdaughter who went through RGS kindergarten through um, and finished out in summer short high school. <coughs> Joe Dash, I'm representing the budget committee. Uh, I'm Shelly Levy. I'm a resident. Um, I've been in town 40 years. I have a son who went through, they didn't have kindergarten then, <laughs> but I have a grandson in the school now. Uh, and I'm, I'm a retired educator. Mm. I'm Caitlin Head, member of the community. Um, I have a kindergartner. Um, I believe that he's an Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> um, she is. <laughs> and then Len Lenny. Lenny. Yes. Okay. Um, and then I'll have a daughter. Kindergarten 2021 20, soon, so soon be two kids. I'm Brian Pellerin. I, uh, I'm a member of the mm -hmm. community. And I've also got a daughter, I, not in RGS. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate um, all of you volunteering. As, as you know, we had, uh, to us, a really overwhelming response uh, of community members. And, and I have to admit, we took the easy way out and took the first, uh, the first group that responded and, and sent in the second um, information requested. So we, uh, we kind of took the easy way out, but I think we have an excellent representation of the community here this evening. So, and we hope the others will. I see Mike is here tonight. I hope others will stay, uh, stay involved too as we go along. So, why are we here? Right? Bob, shall I turn it over to you to give us the history sure. and the... Uh, well, I'll give you a little bit of, uh, of the history and as well as kind of walk you through what you have for information in your binder as well. Um, a little bit of the history. There was, I think this whole process started uh, probably about a year ago. There was some discussion in Summersworth about forming a withdrawal committee and, and, and withdrawing from SAU 56. Um, and at the same time when they decided that they were going to move forward with that, uh, I talked to the Rollinsford School Board, and to keep all options open, it made sense to bring a Warren article forward uh, for Rollinsford as well to go through the same process. Um, that way you can make the decisions for yourself, uh, look at the options for yourself, and it won't be some another entity uh, deciding, basically deciding your fate for you. So that Warren passed, and here we are. So. The process, uh, let me just take you through the binder a little bit. Um, first is just the agenda and, and some places for minutes that, that you can put in there to keep track of our meetings. Um, under timeline, you'll see the pertinent RSA and you can read through that at your leisure. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty detailed about what our task is and what we're set, setting out to do. I would just remind the committee that this is withdrawal from SAU 56. It has nothing to do with your students, it has nothing to do with RGS, it basically has to do with your, your central office services. So that's, that's what, what the, the committee is focused on. Uh, the members with all of the email addresses, if there's anything that's incorrect there, other than the spelling of uh, Shelley, yep. put the E in. Uh, other than that, if there are any errors, just let me know and we'll, we'll correct those along the way. Um, the financial piece, I, I put in the budget as it pertains to the upcoming year. You can see the percentages in there, the ADM, how it's, how it's apportioned out to each of the districts, uh, 
uh, and the budget of the SAU 56 itself. And also on the last page, I believe there's the revenue sources that are presently in place. So that will give, that'll give us some added information as, as we work through this. Under data, uh, anticipating that there would be some questions as to uh, you know, surrounding SAUs, you can see the map of the SAUs in the state of New Hampshire, uh, as well as, um, uh, I've got to admit, the Summersworth Committee has started uh, and probably has a three-month head start on you, uh, so they're operating, so the, this is some of the information that has already been gathered for that committee, and I thought it would be pertinent for this committee, so I'm bringing it forward to you as well. The mileage, I believe, is from the SAU office, so you can you can see um, what's nearby as we explore some different uh, options. I did not list anything in Maine, um, but that certainly is an option that we can talk about as the committee moves forward. If you if you'd like to explore that option as well, and then the final plan. Uh, this is somewhat what it's going to look like. I put two separate plans in there just for a year to, to look at and kind of get an idea. Two very, very different plans. Uh, one for Goshen School District and the other for Franklin. Um, the interesting one in for Franklin is that it, it kind of mirrors what you've got here because Franklin's the, the bigger city and Hill is the uh, smaller town that was, that was in that school district. So. Uh, you know, kind of mirrors what, what we're looking at with Summersworth and Mountain Street as well. So that's just an overview of the information that you have so far, uh, and it really is up to this committee which direction you take, what information you want, and and my office, the SAU, is is at your disposal to gather any information or data that, that you, you'd like that would help you make a decision. Thank you. And that's where we're at. Thank you. So that, that does, I mean, that does bring us up to date, and, and let's all sort of jump in on this discussion. I mean, we, uh, we at the Rollinsford School Board uh, was essentially a little surprised when this came up. We, we had no idea that someone's work was thinking of this, um, but we were very, you know, we were happy to hear. And then we did, we, we actually sought legal counsel um, to, to ask what, what should we do. And essentially, for those of you who haven't been living and breathing this for the last, uh, few months. Um, the Summersworth withdrawal plan will include a plan for Rollinsford. Our, our, and, and the attorney very clearly said in order to have your say in how, what you want to happen in withdrawal, you should really do your own with, withdrawal plan as well. And we will have a section for Summersworth as well, what we think will work for them. At some point during this process, I know it's my hope and I think the whole school board's hope is that we will get together with the Summersworth withdrawal committee, a, a group of a group of us will get together with a group of them and, and see if we can do something more mutually. Uh, sort of that we all sort of agree that, yeah, we're presenting both basically the same plan kind of thing. So, um, I, so have, other, have you read things in the paper that you have uh, questions on right now just about why we're here and what we're doing? Uh, do you have other questions just in general that you might have? I guess I have a general question backing up to like, how did we get here? I, I mean, I understand the RSA is driving the committees but what, do we know what was the, the ignition for Summersworth? The, well, well, the Summersworth School Board voted to do this. Do we know the ignition? I'm not entirely sure um, if, if, what the, if there was indeed a factor. I don't know, or if, even if you can share it. Yeah, I can fill that in. I mean, naturally, I'm in, I'm in an interesting seat because yeah. I'm the superintendent for both sides. And what I've told both boards from the beginning is that any public information I'm going to I'm going to share with each committee, um, and if if you know what you do here, I'm going to share with them, and what they do there, I'm going to share with you, and, and it's all public information, so I don't feel like I'm I'm overstepping my bounds at all. Um, the the Summersworth School Board had many discussions about. Um, I think it's centered around being autonomous and making their own decisions, um, and I think that that's basically what was driving the impetus to, to, to form the committee in the first place and pull out of SAU 56. They really wanted to be their own entity, make their own decisions on, on what happened at the SAU, um, and I think that that was the, was the driving force. 
So the actual deliverable here is summer's worth brand new SAU or the SAU stays as is and Rollinsford has to do that. That's, a, that, that's an excellent question, Joe. Um, the deliverable here is what we decide. So we ha everything is on the table, starting from doing nothing, that we remain, both entities remain in SAU, that we feel the best thing for us to do is to stay with Summersworth in SAU 56. And we lay out a whole plan for that. All the way to, no, we don't want to have anything to do with them. We're going to, um, we, we have lots of choices after that. We can, we can uh, join another SAU, see if someone will, wants to have us, this is what we are here to decide. Do we want to become a part of another SAU? Do we want to hire our own superintendent, our own um, um, supervisory people? And, and we'll lay out exactly what those positions are. It's superintendent, it's special ed um, oversight, it's um, business administration. So oversight. that's creating our own SAU. Essentially creating our own, uh, our own SAU, correct. And, and anywhere, and, and pretty much anywhere in between there. Um, including turning around and asking if Summersworth wants to, as they're at, once they form their SAU, if they, if, you know, if, if, if they would sell us services. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be a consumer of services somewhere down the line, whether we become an active member of another SAU or whether or not we buy services from them. So I guess I didn't understand. So we're, even right now, we're really physically, legally part of that SAU. We're not Correct. buying services like we buy... That's the, the Marshwood <coughs> tuition. And that's, stuff. that's correct. Okay. That's correct, and that's why um, Dr. Godomsky included the financials in here. Uh, we uh, we pay about uh, the percentages in here. We pay about 16 percent, a little less, mm -hmm. of the entire SAU costs, and it is based on our student enrollment here at the school. So. And the joint, the SAU, there's a joint board. There's nine, there's nine board members in Somersworth, and there's five board members in Rollinsford. Together, they make up the SAU board. And the decision making of that combined board is for the SAU only. That's that's the only thing that they they make decisions for. And I, I would kind of remind uh, this group that SAU 56 is. Uh, in number only, and what I mean by that is that uh, no matter what happens, and I'm going to say a year from now because that's kind of the time frame, no matter what happens a year from now, uh, somebody is going to be SAU 56. I don't know whether it's going to be Summersworth, I don't know whether it's going to be Rollinsford, um, but no matter who SAU 56 is, it's going to look differently. So if, if uh, let's just say Summersworth pulled out and Rollinsford remained <coughs> SAU 56. It's going to be a much different looking office, obviously, because of your size. So, you know, I don't want you to, to think about SAU 56 as it stands right now in its, in its full entity because that's going to look differently next year, no matter what. Um, so, you know, I think that Judy touched on, on many of the choices that we have and probably some that we haven't even thought of yet, um, of leaving everything the same, pulling out and contracting services back with, with, with little or no say, uh, contracting with another school district, Dover, Barrington, whatever, you know, whoever is interested in talking, um, creating your own SAU, which, which may be a... Um, the services of a part-time superintendent, the services of a part-time special ed director, the services of a part-time business administrator, or some kind of hybrid of all of those together, or doing nothing and staying the way it is. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different options, and that's the charge of this committee. But by law, we have to. Rollinsford Grade School has to be part of the end. It's not just wrong for grade school, it's wrong for school district. It is, okay. our, it is our entire um, school district, which is K through 12, plus special ed beyond uh, up to the age of 21. So um, all of that is overseen currently by SAU 56, of which uh, Dr. Gronsky is the superintendent right now. And really, look at SAU 56 as the management entity. Yeah. Not, not, the, not the academic entity, not the school entity. This is the management entity. 
So I have two questions. Um, my first question is, is this the last year that we have students in Summersworth? Actually, uh, last year was. We have no students there right we now. We have no students. And my second question is, since we tuition into 7 through 12, how does SAU 56 relate to that? Because we're following their calendar for yep. certain things, and you know we pay it's tuition. We don't have yep. a seat on the school board. Or, you know, it's all good. Again, it's a, it's a very good question. Um, we are essentially, as you say, just tuitioning our students in there. By law, because they are New Hampshire students that live in New Hampshire, even though they're crossing a state line, by New Hampshire law, they have to be overseen by a New Hampshire superintendent, see, uh, uh, by, an S by, by a New Hampshire by SAU. Special ed, regular students, they're all overseen because we have to make sure that, you, that, that the New Hampshire requirements are being met. And our, our oversight, the SAU 56 oversight of your high school students is uh, budgetarily, transportation, special education, uh, and basically is on to everything that's going on with your students. Excellent question. Because we don't just forget about them. They are right. they are indeed, and they do and they do have, they do require oversight, especially in the first few years. It's required quite a bit of oversight right. from, uh, from the SAU office. So when you say stay the same, it, we, we we really cannot stay the same because the. The district that is known now is going to be dissolved. Um, perhaps. So when, but when you say stay the same, what do you mean? At, um, Summersworth might decide we don't want to pull out. But they initiated they, it. They did initiate it, but they've got the same committee going on. Their committee needs to make the same decisions that you're making. So Summersworth might decide we don't want to pull out. Oh. We want to leave it the same. Okay. And then it's up to your committee to decide, do you want to pull out or do you want to leave it the same? And, and two separate entities happening at the same time. Yeah, or vice versa. We could say, well, you know, we don't really want to pull out. You'd think, you think they would have thought of that before. Well, let's, let's remember, it, 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 it's the school board that made the decision to start it, just as the, our school board then made the, the decision to ask the community if we wanted to go ahead and do this. And they had already asked their community, and they, they started with it. Then. It's required by law that a, that, a, that a community group get together and decide it. And maybe the community is going, oh, wait a minute, why, why are we doing this? Or, wow, great idea, let's march forward with it. So, unfortunately, I'm going to say unfortunately, we're reacting um, to it. But, it, it, it. but again, the world is open to us. <laughs> so, if they really do pull out, I mean, if I were a resident of Summersworth, I would be thinking, whoa. The administration part, the business pieces, are going to change that much because Rollinsford is not there. But their expenses are going to go up 17, 22 percent. Right? About 183,000. Yeah, okay, so that, <laughs> I think once that will open up people's minds. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, 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 that's, been, that's been known and up front right from the beginning that there, there is going to be some kind of an initial adjustment as far as, as cost goes because you're right. They would, now the next question is, and it would, it would be up to um, the, the remaining school board, what does it look like? Are there staffing adjustments? Are there, are there other things that could be done to reduce the cost? Uh, in, in, in your case, if you, if you were SAU 56 or creating your own, yeah, it would look drastically different. In their case, will it look different? Perhaps. Of the things you said, the SAU does, special ed, transportation. Is the transportation charges for Rollinsford part of that 22%? No. That's separate. So, yeah, we, we so, pay that as a separate school. So really, of those things that the SAU does, the only variable is probably special ed. Um, it, it's su superintendent, special ed, um, business administration. Business administration. No, but those are all, like a, like a, there's not a special superintendent. When I when I say when I say transportation, it, it's not the the payment of transportation; it's the management of contracts. Yeah. yeah. In the organization fees. All contracts. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Contracts. Right. It's Which is fully charged back to Rollins. Right. For right. Yeah. For it's, it's a full time yeah. job. Okay. Yeah. No. No. I realize. <laughs> but is that different? Okay. Well, yeah. we don't think it's. Uh, no. That 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 seventeen to whatever percentage uh, that we pay is simply the actual. Administration that takes place inside the SAU office. 
Yes. And um, so, so um, let's see. They have uh, they they have uh, psychologists. They, uh, I mean, we have psychologists. They're they're at that level, and they, and they go to all the schools as necessary. Um, the superintendent who oversees all the students in both districts. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the business administrator who does a lot of work, all the contracts, um, the budget every year, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, more reports than I even know about. They get they go to the state and the federal entities. It's an amazing amount of paperwork that, that goes on that way. So it's, it's, it's the administrative yes. part of it. Yep. Yeah. And I know you get that, Joe. Yes. So yep. trying to be clear. So the town the town still has to vote once the, this group creates a recommendation. Correct. Yeah, it's spelled out in the in the timeline RSA. Yeah. It, it shows what you have to do, and, and eventually there are some public hearings that you would need to hold. Uh, it, because ultimately, the plan goes to the State Board of Education, and then it comes back, and it gets approved or not by the town. There's an awful lot to absorb, and so we'll, we'll try to get sort of organized tonight, and then uh, figure out how when we want to meet again to, to, to sort of really jump in yeah. deeply into it. Um, so, so in essence, the goal of this board, our, our mission, is to come up with that withdrawal plan at a certain point of t in time. And the t as, as uh, Dr. Gadomsky has already said, Summersworth is ahead of us by a number of months. And they're... Uh, and I, they, they, will not, they do not have to go in front of their voters. They simply go in front of the city council. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So, so they don't have to have the whole voter referendum. It's just the city council will be voting on. And their deadline to produce a plan really is in the kind of December time frame because they got going a little bit earlier. But I think you know, Judy brings up a really good point a little while ago on uh, at some point perhaps having the representatives from each committee get together because if there's kind of agreement on what that final outcome might look like you could present two plan two parallel plans to the state board at the same time and I think it would be very well received by the state board um, and then you know if if you can come to an agreement of what that would look like um, at that point it would be a smooth process so probably sometime in the July time frame, perhaps. I was hoping summer at summer, <laughs> summer at some point, because I think I think in order to make all this happen, so that we're not so, so that we're not so that we're following almost we, we're almost forced to follow the same timeline in essence that summer's worth is because it, it would be better to have both of our plans in in front of the state board obviously because they're going to have something for us in there and we want the state to see ours as well so so we would want to have the com plan completed by november ish um, and by december because then, then we also have to have it ready for um for the state board to review, which I believe has to be done a couple of months ahead of time, before it even comes to uh, uh, the public, which would be, they would vote on it in March here. So um, it, it, there's a lot to think about, and and Bob sort of, you know, he kind of he, he, he kind of slips over it, but as we think about it, I've been thinking about it a lot, and I, I'm sure other school board members have too. Um, if we end up buying services from another SAU, not becoming part of that SAU, but buying services from them, we really don't have any say about how they're going to do their work. I mean, yes, we're not really their employees. We're, we are con they're, they're employers. We're really um, contracting with them just to get the work done. Um, and it, there will be oversight, of course. But, um, I mean, I think that's, am I being fair about that? Yeah, Come I mean, at that, that point, it would be a contracted service. Yeah. And right now, we're, we're your employees. Yeah. Is that a common in New Hampshire? Are there other smaller districts that are don't have their own SAU but contract with somebody to come to all that You've stuff? got all kinds of SAUs yeah. in New Hampshire, and, and I can bring that information next time. Uh, you've got some single district SAUs. You've got uh, SAUs. You've got at least one on the Vermont border that crosses lines. 
uh, you've got multi, you've got some that's seven, eight, nine districts in one SAU. You've got some large singles, you've got some small singles, uh, you've got all kinds of stuff. So all those possibilities that are out there, none of them are really new in terms of implementation. They've all been done or are in process right now. Yeah, any model you're going to look at, we can get information that mirrors that. We're a district. Rollinsburg is a district yes. versus an right. SAU, and, and I think it's important to know the difference. Between, like an SAU is, uh, it could be one, I suppose, but usually it's two or more districts, whereas... It could be one, like Portsmouth. Um, it, it's just one. No, SAU. because they have New England, oh, they have, and New they have New Newcastle, no, and they have New England. Okay, okay. Anyways, they have other stuff. Portsmouth is by itself. Yeah, it's yeah. But 50. Is. But the other towns... Tuition in, right? Yeah, right. You guys know what you're talking about. That's right. And you've got some small ones like like uh, uh, Barnstead is a single district part time. Uh, Alton is a single district part time. Uh, Pittsfield is its own district full time. Um, and then you've got I came from Northwood, Nottingham, and Stratford, three separate school districts in the same SAU. Don't want to cut it. Winnicott, which Hampton, and then Southampton. Yeah, Winnicott, it's a, a, a uh, cooperative. I mean, that, and then there's something like a, a regional district, like a Governor Wentworth, which is one district, but in that district it has uh, New Durham, Wolfboro, Ossipee, Effingham, Madison. Ma you know, all of those that, that uh, you've got all kinds of different configurations in. And all our options. It's up to this committee to um, mm -hmm. see, and 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 it, it is. I mean, Bob, they will. Be, Bob will be doing a lot of the legwork for us. Um, if, if we say we'd like to get an idea of uh, what going loan might cost, I mean, he, he will do the research and, and, and bring that into us, or um, or uh, or who might be interested in either sell, uh, in, in, in contracting our services, or who might be interested in uh, having us become part of their SAU, or become part of our SAU, or, like, if we're the one this case. What are the guidelines that the committee has to yeah. make, if we have like 10 different options, how do we come to, what are the guidelines that help us to, to decide what is the best one? Strictly cost, flexibility. You know, we can. We we have to write. We have to come, we up, have with to come up with those guidelines. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we a little more unique because we're not going to send seven through twelve to this if we go with another district? Let's say. Let's remember, it doesn't matter if we had a million students or one student. That that student's education has nothing to do with the, the student, with, with the cost. administration. Well, it does with the cost, I'm sure. Right. But um. But it has nothing to do with um, the work is the same. They're going to have to file the same reports. They're going to have to do a budget. They're going to have to do everything. Right. Yeah. I can give you an example of that because over in in, in SA forty four North Nottingham and Stratford, um, each one of them has their own K eight school, and then they tuition their high school students out. Stratford and Northwood tuition to Co Brown, um, and which is a private, private entity. I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a um, academy, recognized as an academy by the DOE. Uh, and then Nottingham has a K eight, and they tuition their kids either to Co Brown or to Dover. So it's it's the it's the same thing. I mean, you're you're tuitioning your high school students out. Right. So how do most students get this started? Like, do you figure out what's important? Do you do you start putting them? I think we do figure out what's important to, to this to this committee. We figure out what's important. To what what are the things we uh, what are the things that we think are most important to help us make our decision? We can do uh, we can use a board. We can uh, screw on the walls. No. <laughs> if I might suggest. I think the first thing we need to do is pick a direction that we want to go. I, the end product we need is something that could be presented to the state as, here is a plan. 
Uh, it doesn't even have to be here is the plan because the town may reject it. Just here is a plan that we can use to go forward. And that means we need to pick a direction that we want to look at. So the first thing we need to look at is are we setting up our own SAU? Are we yeah, trying to join another SAU? But, or are we contracting services uh, from uh, another SAU? Once we've answered the, that basic question, everything else is just filling in details. Okay? If we're setting up our own SAU, then we get, get into the questions of uh, uh, what do we need for offices, what do we need for staff, what is that going to cost? Uh, you know, if, we're, if we want to join a different SAU, then that takes us in the direction of uh, contacting other SAUs to even see if they might be open to that and coming up with a plan if such and such SAU is open to the idea, here's how that would work. I, you know, whichever path we take, we pretty quickly get down into the details once we've decided amongst ourselves what the basic path that we want to look at is. I don't know if you can pick a path until you, I mean, let's say there's 12 options. We can't do pros and cons and implementation plans at a high level for 12. You almost have to pick, well, here's four. Then do we take those four and say, okay, for each of those four, here's the outline that should be reviewed and looked at in terms of cost, benefits to the school, but the town, all of those things, so that we have a consistent, you only want to do three? I could be wrong, right? Pretty sure our initial question is three. Well, let's start. Uh, well, let's start uh, narrowing three things down. Three options. Right? Yeah. There's, there's three basic options, as far as I understand it. Uh, we've got um, an RSA that details what services we need provided administratively. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's only three ways to do that. We either have our own SAU, we join another SAU, or we contract with an SAU. Do we even have the option of crossing state lines and contracting with Maine? That's a possibility. There may be some additional okay. hurdles doing that, um, but I believe it's a possibility. Okay. At least in 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 part or in whole. We need to do some additional research on that. Well, they would have to know the New Hampshire laws. Yeah, there, there may would definitely be, be a subset of yeah. one of the there other. There may have choices. to be some dual certifications as far as the the superintendent goes. Right. Um, the business administration piece I think would be fine uh, and the special ed piece uh, quite frankly we're already doing that mm -hmm. but that would still be a subset of either joining somebody else or contracting with somebody so yeah, I think we can contract else and we can look at the pros and cons of those three options and just generally get a feel for who's leaning in what direction. Have I captured the top three here? Join another SAU, become our own SAU, contract SAU services. Well, and join Maine, possibly. That is what... Or Maine. Do nothing. Um, I, I do know that uh, Marshwood uh, is willing to do everything for us. We, we haven't discussed cost. That would be something we could ask uh, uh, Bob to look into. Uh, except superintendency. They, they, are they have just hired a new superintendent, and I do not believe um, they're, they're not interested in making sure that he's New Hampshire certified or whatever it's called. Oh, okay. But they, be... they are willing to do business and um, special ed. Transportation. Well, well, that that's contracts. They, they oh, wouldn't okay. do the they, they wouldn't do it. They would oversee the contracts. Oh, okay, gotcha. That yeah. And oh. does that come into this building also, like maintenance of this building, or does the principal take care of that? That's our district. Our district takes care of that. Okay. It's, but it's good. It's good. I mean, you, I mean, I understand. It's hard. It's hard to know where the line is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to get your superintendent and your administrative services from the same entity, or would that be possible to have? No. Right. No. So we could theoretically 
contract to um, Marshwood for business administrator and special ed oversight and maybe have a part-time superintendent? Is that, yes. is that how that would play out? Yeah. Yeah. It's an option. If, if we think that, I mean, in my mind, it's you know how does how does the superintendent then work right. with these people and how does it work? But you know, again, that's we don't have to figure that out right now. We have to figure out if we think that's feasible or so. Is that an option? So a combination of a combination of essentially um, our own superintendent. This two, this one, this would be yeah. The superintendent yeah. would be here, and other services would be here, right? So it well, it, 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 it would be kind of a hybrid of all three. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, what it would be. that's true. Yeah, yeah that's so true. So the fourth option would be a hybrid. Of okay. Three. I like that. Okay. And and remember, I mean, there's there's going to be a, a, a in a smaller entity, there's a morphing of of responsibilities here. And what I mean by that is, in our office right now, we have somebody in charge of HR, we have somebody in charge of payroll, we have somebody in charge of you know, the assistant superintendent does a lot of curriculum work. We have somebody available if we have to do investigations, those types of things. And in a smaller entity, um, your superintendent may take a bigger piece of, I mean, not a more expansive piece, but more responsibilities because it's a small entity. You may have a business administrator that does uh, the business administrator, payroll, HR, I mean, they may take on all of those responsibilities in a smaller entity. There's a lot of moving parts, mm -hmm. and they all have to communicate clearly with each other in the best interest of our kids. Right. But in a smaller entity, I mean, that, that it, it, the size that our SAU is right now, it would be physically impossible for our business administrator to do all of the HR, do all of the insurance, do all of the contracts, do all of the payroll, create the budgets. I mean, in a small entity like Rollinsford, if, if you were on your own, a, a BA, a part-time BA could do all of that. So, you know, that's why I say it's going to look different. So does it make sense for us to understand what the key components are of an SAU, of the administrative unit, um, and then how important those are to us and what's, what's critical? Um, and then maybe we can bounce each of these options up against that. I, I agree with Joe. I think you need something to compare and contrast. It's Joe, right? Yes. <laughs> Compare and contrast against. Otherwise, you don't have your. I think you need that level of plan. But I, I mean, I think about things like um, the emails that come up, the automatic, the robocalls when school's out. Like, we're going to have to figure out what we do for that for Rollinsford. So there's lots of small things, too, and I, I just right. hope we. But, do those but, come but, from but the SAU? yeah, but okay. they, they do. But let's remember that if it falls under. SAU it would fall under the superintendent. Mm -hmm. to, to do, that, that, how, however we get superintendent services, that entity, whether we're contracting for it, whether we've hired them part-time or whatever, they would have to work some of that out. Is that... Yeah, I guess we'd have to, those would have to be part of the scope of work that's yeah. required. And I can bring you, okay. I can bring this committee next time, the, the uh, clear outline of the SAU responsibilities so you'll get an idea of the things that fall under that. Can, instead of waiting yeah. for the next meeting, could you email them out? I mean, I'd be much better looking at it beforehand. Yep. Sure. But in general, it is, it is I think it's mostly listed on, so, so the actual positions that would need to be filled are superintendent, business, Administrator. Okay. And really, it's 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 business services. Yeah, I, I keep saying business good. administrator. You're right. It's, it's, it's the business services because some school districts have contracted out that entire business piece. Somebody has to do curriculum. Well, yes, but let's remember it's a grade school. Maybe it's the principal takes that on. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not know. assuming that. Well, that would, I don't know what yeah, that would fall under under the, the guidance of the superintendent with the building administration. 
So my, you're right. I mean that that's yeah. a that's a task that needs to be done. Right. How that's going to be done? Right. So so in essence, under the under the super, I should have left a lot more room. I should have <laughs> because, or written the last because it's really it's the superintendent who's going to work all that out uh, with the school board and the, and the school administration because we're so such a small entity. Just like the robocalls. Right. Just all these little things that you don't think about. But remember, and when you look at all of the responsibilities too, it doesn't mean that your superintendent has to do all that. It means that it has to get done. Right. They're accountable. They're <laughs> he has to right. see it. I mean, I'm responsible for all of that in, in, in our school districts now, but I don't do all of that myself. Right, but you have a staff. Right. If Rollins Street might have a superintendent, that's the way we go, but I don't know that that superintendent you, you've would got, have a staff. You've got a principal, you've got leaders in your building, and I mean, it would just look differently. Yeah, we, we have, an, the, the, the principal has an administrative assistant. Okay. Um, who, 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 who does quite a bit. Um, does that person have more capacity? We don't know. Do we? It, and it may, it may be that someone else has to be hired to do some of that. Again, who, who, what all do we have to hire? Right. And where do we house them? Okay. So we have a lot of questions if we go in that direction. I was looking at that steel shed out there. <laughs> <laughs> they must have some extra room there. Right? It's tiny houses. It's all okay. <laughs> But you're right. I mean, the tasks and the responsibilities are just going to look differently. I mean, I, another example of that would be the way our system is set up right now. If we have to do a personnel investigation right now, uh, I, I usually turn that over to my special <coughs> director and my assistant superintendent to do the initial investigation, and then it comes to me to follow through on a decision. And a small entity like this, um, it would be the superintendent basically that's doing the investigation or, or any kind of background checks on that. Yeah. It would just look differently. Yeah, I think it would be interesting to see the tasks. Yeah, I think that's key. Sure. Because yeah. whoever does them isn't as important as to know what are all the things that we have to cover. Mm -hmm. That we kind of just depend on the SNU right. right now to do. Right. Yeah. Well, the uh, uh, bare minimum that has to legally be covered is uh, listed in uh, RSA 194-C4. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we don't have printed out here. Uh, oh, Bobby, you should. Keep turning the pages. You, should. you don't have it? We don't have up to the uh, No, it's for school only, approval. It's That's the school oh, approval oh, oh, piece oh. I think you're looking at. Oh, oh, oh. And I, I've got, the, I've got that in my office. Okay. I can ship that out there. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, that too, yeah. it's a very long it is and long, exhaustive yeah. list, <laughs> but yeah. it's... Yeah, the amount of time that any of these tasks actually take out of a given year is going to scale with the number of teachers, the number of students. And for a, a, a small district like this, I, a, a single person can accomplish a lot. A single you know, part-time person, actually, yeah. You know, potentially, but you are looking at some. You're, right. you're looking at tasks that require a certain level of expertise. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you can find somebody with the correct level of expertise who is looking for part-time work, fantastic. So that is not. Not an easy thing to do. Yeah, you have SAUs in New Hampshire that, uh, with all configurations, you know, your part-time superintendents, there there are uh, SAUs in New Hampshire that have a superintendent one day a week, two days a week, three days a week, four days a week, and full-time five days a week. And, and all of those configurations exist in, in your state. So, you, you know, to your point, it, it scaled to the size of the entity that you're dealing with. And it's possible to find people, even today, who would work two days a week or well, a five lot days of, a month. Or yeah, a lot of those uh, positions are, are typically filled by uh, retired superintendents that want to work two days a week or mm -hmm. non-subtractive. He says right now. Just saying. <laughs> 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 and 
at least 10, right, current part-time superintendents in the state. She's doing her she's doing oh, yeah. searches right now. Based on the I mean, I have the salary, but. Yeah, based on I the can, salary, you're I probably can, right. I can bring you information on that next time, too, of, of the single districts, multiple districts. I mean, all that information is, I, I, that's easy to gather, so. It might just be helpful for us to know who to talk to. I'm, I'm thinking we need mm -hmm. to talk to people, right? Yeah, I don't, you know, I, 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 there's a lot of choices, and, you know, having our own superintendent or a part-time superintendent, I don't know, does that isolate our district that they're they're not involved, you know, with like a full functioning district that is K through twelve, let's say, and, and things that they share and new practices that happen and coming down the pipeline and things when we're, you know little. I, I, I can't speak for um I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna ask as Bob to respond to this, but in in general the superintendent is focused on they're uh, on their well, it's the whole and, but but they've always but they go to they go to statewide meetings they go to they get involved with lots of stuff that's going on i don't think that that would change with whoever we have i mean they would be especially if we set the expectation that we would expect them to keep up with current practices yeah right best practices see but they're not in a, you know they're not in an office where there's a lot going on and you hear things you've got a lot of people working for you so oh, I think they'd still have to be in they still have to be in constant contact with, uh, with the principal, with the teachers. Uh, yeah. I met with the, the I was it MSED in Maine. I, I, well, yeah, MSED, yeah, with Marsh. What I mean, they would certainly yeah. have a relationship with the Marsh. So I don't think it restricts anything. Yeah, I, I really don't think it restricts about. anything. And in some ways, it, 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 a smaller entity is actually the superintendent is is more involved in what's going on. I mean, if you look at a huge entity like uh, Manchester, um, I mean, the superintendent is so far removed from the daily operations and what's going on that the, the, the business political aspect of it is 90% of the job. So, you know, I don't think it restricts best practices or staying current or being actively involved in organizations. Um, I don't think that restricts that at all. I think being small can inhibit your ability to have economies of scale when it comes to like HR and payroll and things like that. Mm -hmm. In a lot of ways, it could unencumber you from, you know, parses and procedure as well. So it could go both ways. Well, and uh, having a um, having our own SAU, it would absolutely be a bit of a hybrid. Um, I mean, we we could find a superintendent who could really handle everything. We probably aren't. Uh, it would make the most sense to just assume from the beginning that if we got our own superintendent, uh, certain individual responsibilities would end up being contracted out. Uh, you know, whether we have a superintendent plus a bookkeeper handling things like payroll or whatever else. You know, I, I mean, I'm sure a good retired superintendent could handle everything if he wanted to, but I don't know that that would really make sense to use a highly skilled individual's time for some of the more routine tasks. But that's just my thought on it. Are we also thinking of what the town would actually approve and vote for? Because I think the town, that's not my opinion, but the town's bottom dollar is what's it going to cost us? I don't know. I think that's yep. just something to keep in mind that everyone just sees dollar figures on their property taxes and that's so all they really paying care about. 16% <laughs> now of, you know, whatever. Right. They probably don't want to pay more exactly. than 16% right. this figure. Well, ultimately, as you gather information and as you, you narrow it down to you know two, two different directions or one different direction or however you want to do that, we can narrow down approximately what the dollar cost is going to be. I mean, obviously, if, you're going to, if you decide we want to uh, contract the services out to another SAU, then at that point we'd have to have discussions with the other SAUs about, about what kind of cost that would be. If you're looking at creating your own SAU, um, we can put together some tentative costs as to what we think that the time constraints would be and, and, and you 
know, put a cost to that as well. So if I have the budget number right here, we currently spend 183,000 on SAU services. Mm -hmm. So to your point, that seems like that if you want to make people in the town happier, if that's what they're going to do. Right. We can't come back at 250,000. Right. Oh, right. Exactly. Right. It, right. exactly. It has to be in that yeah. It has to be around the 200,000 figure. We've, yeah. we've been up, we've been as high as 199. Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, one of the things the SAU board <coughs> does, which we're all part of, is often we will, the SAU board is allowed to have reserves. The SAU is allowed to have reserves, uh, uh, unspent um, mm -hmm. expenditures. Unexpended uh, money. Uh, the district is not, so we're not allowed to keep any money from year to year. But the SAU can, and we own 16 or 17 percent of that. And every year, we, we often vote to bring down the cost by by, mm -hmm. by by taking some of that from the reserve in the SAU 56 and, and bringing down the cost, which we've done for the last few years. So around 200,000 is probably a good a good place to be. So if we leave the SAU or that gets dissolved, if they have a yeah, well, hundred thousand dollars we get sixteen thousand of that. Okay. So as long as they know that. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> we get that back. Yes. Yes. Okay. We fade it in and we get it back. Okay. So historically have there been districts that have dissolved and have other districts absorbed one of those districts? Because I see here joining another district versus contracting SAU services, what would make a district want to take another district? Very good question. Um, I, 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 personal opinion, and I haven't done a lot of legwork on this, um, I think contracting services with another SAU in, in some way, shape, or form is certainly something that would, would probably be received and, and discussed. Uh, joining another SAU, becoming a kind of cooperative, uh, I think that's going to be a tough road. Because when the other voters have to vote on it also, the, the receiving SAU? Yeah. Yes. And what would be the benefit of them wanting to take another... You know, well, the, the benefit would be if there was another, in my mind, if there was another small SAU that was looking to have a full service SAU, at a at a uh, at that point reduced cost. Um, that would be summer's work. <laughs> that that would. There's nobody else around here. It's small. Right. Durham is not small. Dover is not small. Well, uh, yeah, you'd have to. I mean, Milton, Wakefield. Those that's are, those far. Are, I know. That's, that's what far. I mean. They're small. Um, yeah. Barrington, but they're. Yeah, I mean that's that's We're part of the dilemma. Control. You're right. That's yeah. why I did the that's mileage sheet because you know you're not. Realistically, with an SAU, you're not you're not going to have an SAU 50 miles between right. districts. Right. I mean, you know, we have well, why not? What would be the what would be the constraints on that happening? Um, part, any any time you had to deal with with staff, whether it was HR pieces or payroll or certainly uh, superintendent services, with everything from. Um, personnel issues to canceling school to to being actively involved with school boards um, it, 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 does, okay. it would be tough and 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 superintendents um, uh, probably spend I would say an average of two to three nights a week during the school year mm -hmm. um, at meetings for every town. Yeah. Every town has a school. Now, well, I, mean, I, I would say, I mean, I would say the, I would say the SAU 56 one spends a, an average of, of two to three a, a week, mm -hmm. um, and that that includes Rollinsford and, and Summersworth. It's both okay. districts, but but still, it's an awful lot. Yeah. It's an awful lot of time, and if, if if you have to drive 50, 60, and then they live another 20 miles beyond, mm -hmm. if they're driving mm -hmm. 80 miles, uh, okay. it, it's an awful lot to expect of someone to be able for the just for their own health to be able to do a good job. It's an awful lot to expect them to spend that time traveling. So I've heard two things come up in the past few minutes around what's important for us, right? One is cost and one is geography. Um, if we agree that those are important. I and mean, one thing I would throw out there is just overall quality of services or availability of services. I wouldn't want us to see see us. We obviously can't offer anything less than the, the losses we need to, but I don't think we want as a as a town or district to offer less. Right. So we well, want to we maintain. Can't, yeah. We really can't. I mean, well, unless we're even we're, if we could, I, I think we can all agree that we wouldn't. Yeah, we wouldn't want to go back. 
However, that there is, um, that does relate to one of the differences between setting up our own SAU and contracting with somebody else in that if we set up our own SAU, which is by necessity tiny, and our superintendent gets hit by a bus, all of a sudden we don't have an SAU. I, you know, if we're, or he just has a stroke and we fills, out all, the, fills out all the paperwork. He wins the lottery. He He just he doesn't like the makes some machine. huge mistake yes. or something. I, you know, if something happens and there's a significant liability and we've got uh, this tiny SAU where essentially all the decisions are made by one person, all the responsibilities on one person, there's no... There's no additional capacity to take over if he's incapacitated. There's no well, uh, nobody else to absorb the liability if the job is done wrong. Uh, you know, it's great that we would have our own uh, superintendent and he would be really focused on the needs of uh, Rollinsford exclusively, but we would be giving up quite a lot compared with contracting from a larger SAU that you know, it has more people, it's, it's not reliant on a single employee, and the employees it's got, because it's spreading jobs across a whole lot of people, they've got more specialization. You're not asking a very small pool of people to try and do everything. That's what I meant by that isolation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of, of, you know, that okay. we're on an island by ourselves as opposed to if we were you know, con we contract it out. But yes. if we contract, we're not paying for those services, so either way we'd have to incur the additional expense. We were to lose that, that if we have the resource in-house we're contracting services XYZ, it doesn't mean we can automatically give the contracted services ABC as well, right? Good point. So I don't know if there are any um, fallback situation that's in place from a state DOE perspective if there were something, I know there are interim superintendents and things like that, um, but if we were, but it, I agree, we don't want to create a job description and a position based on a single person and a single thing that we could never replace, like we can fill it once and never replace it. And I, and I will say that has happened around the state, um, you know, they're, they're, whether it's superintendents or business administrators or special directors that have had circumstances that they, they were not able to complete the tasks. Um, I know NHSAA, New Hampshire School Administrators Association, has a list of, of um, reti basically retired people that are interested in interims for just that reason, to come in for a month, two months, six months, whatever it may be, to fulfill that. I know business-wise there are firms that you can contract to come in to specifically do payroll and those types of things. So, you know, there are options, obviously not ideal, um, but there are options should something like that happen. But the school board kind of oversees, the school board kind of helps keep you in check, basically, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not making these crazy decisions, and the school oh, board would you. say, like, you know, <laughs> oh, hold, pump the brakes here, what are you doing? Like, I don't think we would, I, at least that wouldn't be a concern of mine, that we're putting all our faith in one small superintendent, not small, but the superintendent for such a, you know what I mean? Yeah, we would. I mean, yeah, I, I still have the still same constraints the, now that, yeah. that I report to the school board right, and we have exactly. those meetings and discuss things, whether it's budget or, right. or anything like that. Right. So, you know, that would that would remain similar. But you'd still have the checks and balances system, I guess. Mm -hmm. is what yes, I'm trying right. to point out. Yes, whether whether we're our own SAU right. and I'm assuming we can build that into a contract as well. I mean, it, um, we lose. We lose some control if we contract everything right. out because they are going to do it their way on their time frame. Right. In yep. essence, yep. Um, it will not be the same relation. It won't be the same school board superintendent relationship yep. because it's a contracted service. Right. But there will be a relationship. I'm assuming. I mean, it's not. That's the way we. That's the way we have to look at it. Right. But isn't that what we're looking now with yeah. Marshwood? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But also what you forget is. 
we have our own superintendent right. who very occasionally we can go to and say, can you please go talk right. to them? Right. But, but the difference is that, that with Marshwood, you're talking about your students. Yeah. You're talking about the academic piece that is, is in, in the building. This has nothing, well, the SAU office is more business oriented in, in what our tasks are all about. Right, and that's why when you have an SAU, you have an assistant superintendent and you have a number of people that when a tragedy happens or somebody leaves, there's backup. As opposed um, to trying to get a stranger to come in and get them up to speed after, you know, but four the, months. Or one, of, one of the differences that I've seen in, in other entities when you contract services out is that you do lose um, kind of that personal aspect of, of um, having somebody available because right now I, I, I answer to the school board and you know if you're if you're contracting the service it's kind of like um, if I contract the electrical um, services that if we need maintenance or anything done on electrical if I contract it out to a private contractor I work on their schedule they come when they want they do they do the job that I pay for if I have a electrician on our payroll that's our employee, they do what we tell them to do right. when we tell them to do it. <laughs> and the service is immediate and, and flexible. So it's kind of like that with, right. with central office services. Problem. You know, that scenario in reality is kind of cost prohibitive. Well, that's the, the problems difference problems. between a part time superintendent that's yours and a contracted service that's owned by self. Yeah, I, I so think I we have to look at the. What are all the, the things that the SAU does for Rollins? To me, that would be the yeah. starting point. And then just start analyzing them. Even, not even looking at a solution yet, mm -hmm. but just kind of like analyzing it. What are the criteria for this particular item that's extremely important to us? And then, do you service that by, it's critical that it be a, our own, one of those options? Or it's something that's easily to contract out? Because it's easy to control, it's not that critical, mission, it's not that mission critical, that kind. I mean, that is that a way for us to kind of start? If we got the list of the tasks, people can kind of think about what are the things that are really important to the to, to running this district? And then weigh that to a super, full, a, our own superintendent right, right. versus... Because you're going to come down to say, look, we're really, you know, we're, we're to the point that, hey, we can get by for a part-time superintendent for these three critical things. And this is our, we have concerns about backup, so here's how, this is, this is our backup plan for that. And then look down about the, right. you know, how we would do other things, that, that these aren't so bad, you know, they'll, whatever the, I tell you, I'm very ignorant at this point, I don't know what all those tasks are, I've heard what you say, but I think once we got that detail, we can probably start getting a little bit more comfortable about how we'd want to solve for it. And this will make it real. Yeah. You know, make it real for us. Yeah. So, all right. So, it's, it's not. So, does that sound like a, a consensus thing? We'll um, we'll mm -hmm. get that probably in, in another week or so, and then set up a meeting in a couple of weeks to sort of re or, or whatever, wherever we decide to sort of continue in that direction. Yeah. So maybe even before. Mm -hmm. So people, as they think about that, well, you know, because I don't know what they would be, but you know. If we're going to meet together to go over that, what would be some of the criteria? And Bob, you might be able to help us. What that we should look at each of these items that would help us, kind of, if not rank them finally, but just kind of rank them and, and put some thought into that. This is a very critical item, and probably people on the school board or people who have kids in the school are going to say this is a critical item to me as a parent. So if, um, you know, if we can think about that ahead of time, or when we meet next time, we're going to have to kind of go through and figure out what are those critical items. We're just trying to get ahead of it a little bit. It's required by law, right? Yeah, yeah. The stuff underneath. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Overall timeline, like I'm looking at these withdrawal mm -hmm. plans, the date is 2015, and then like beginning July 1st, 2017. Like, It sounds like trying to join a new SAU would probably take a lot of time, a lot of effort. It, it may not, it may not happen can, based on you know, what right. Bob has said, right? And so, I guess also, I don't know, time's a factor, right? I think that's important. To, I think time is a factor because I believe Summersworth will be ready to pull the trigger for July 1st. 
Uh, a year from July. But doesn't yeah. the state have a say in that? To say, hey, I understand some of what you're trying to do, but exactly. you can't pump the brakes. You know, you know, <laughs> yeah. cool. I don't know. Is that true? That well, well they, they do have a say in that, uh, and they would have a say in the timeline. Um, but part of your plan needs to identify what mm -hmm. Summersworth's options are, and part of their plan is to identify what your options are. So That's, mm -hmm. it's important that we need at some point. So yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, so if if everything, I mean, really, I think Judy's right. You, you're kind of looking at a year from July first okay. as as the the change date, the implementation, the implementation date, and. You know, if it gets slowed down for some reason, that's a possibility. But I, I would work on on that as your date. And that means we have to have decisions in front of the state board of ed by December because it has to be on the March ballot. If indeed that, if, if, if indeed that July, that a year from this for July first is going to be our twenty twenty. Yeah. And let's say we we yeah. end up proposing a new our own SAU and the town approves and all that kind of stuff. How long does it take to set up that SAU? And who sets that up? Is that the school would that be the Rollinsford School Board that sets that up and initiates that? Well, the old, Excellent question. <laughs> the, the school board would oversee that. Oh, right. Okay. Um, but It'd be the hiring. It, I mean, realistically by the time you get to December and January, you're going to have a pretty good idea on the direction that right. you're proposing. So from that point forward, it would be in preparation. So everything from looking for, if you're setting up your own, where are we going to put it? How much is it going to cost? What kind of technology do we need? What are we going to do for staffing? I mean, we can do all of that. Um, it's a push. We can do all of that for the July 1st deadline. Okay. But I, I would assume we'd have to file with the state appropriately and all yep. that, like file yep. the necessary. And then yes, part so of paperwork and all that. Fun part stuff. of your new staff, whoever that may be, that's that's a summer task to right. fine tune that because you're right, there's a lot of work attached yeah. to that. Okay. And, and and Bob just said some interesting words that of course we hadn't thought about yet when we started thinking about costs, the startup costs, technology costs, technology, what we have to buy. Space we have to rent or or, or buy and, um, and and the, and the, and the furnishing of an office, uh, all all those things have to be considered as well. If if we if indeed we're on our own, and the assets would need to be divided because not only in in the the unexpended capital reserve that you've got, but also physically. You know, you've got 16 percent so of, of the desks and the computers. <laughs> and the board. Oh, I mean that's. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's all of those assets are, are you know, at 16 percent. So, but well, let's remember they they don't have more than let's say you know 20 computers in the whole place over there. So, um, hey, so so, uh, so so 16 percent of those does yeah. not add up to a yeah. lot of computers. <laughs> does the school board for the district then become the SAU if we were to yes. create our own? To be yes. one in the same. One in yes. the same. Okay. Which is, uh, you know, right right now it, it's Summersworth and the Rollinsford School Boards that make up the SAU board, which indeed is the entity that oversees the super the, the SAU. Right. It isn't really the individual school boards that oversee it right now. It's the joint. Yeah. Are there joint meetings? Yes, there are. Yes. Are there meetings that we should attend uh, here and see? And well, the, uh, the next one is Monday. It's <laughs> <laughs> 6.30, so you're always welcome. I, I don't know how, how well they get posted um, around town, but um, we, we meet three or four times a year. Uh, okay. The joint. The joint. The joint the board. Oh, actually, a few more times around budget. an issue, and then there are more meetings. <laughs> mm. <laughs> or if we're trying to hire a superintendent. Or, right. Or, uh, mm -hmm. Things come up. Is this an issue? Form? The separating of the, you know. I, I, I believe that is, I, I believe uh, the issue is that the Summersworth board felt they wanted to separate from the Rollinsford board. Yeah. They wanted to be their own. Right. They, they wanted to oversee everything that happened in the SAU. I, I, I mean, I'm guessing that that's what I gather. That was stated. Hmm? That was stated in the yeah. meeting. That, that they want to be, the, they want to, they want their own SAU to make their own decisions for that, that, SAU office, so they feel like there's two. 
diverted. It, it may have started with the mic. <laughs> <laughs> <So, laughs> no, it yeah, might have been mentioned with the paper. <laughs> <Maybe. laughs> That's um, safe to say. But, um, <laughs> But are there other things that fundamentally, just to be helpful to understand, are there fundamental things that Rollins, Ford, and Summersworth don't agree on that are? I've only, I've, I've only been on, I've been a, a school board member now for seven years, and so I've been on the joint board for seven years, and I have always felt that we worked very collegially. Okay. Um, that's why I, I was actually quite surprised when this came up okay. uh, last September. So. Um, and as a matter of fact, I thought things were getting what were even, you know. Yeah. Okay. So, so, and, uh, Are there people we should consider, like other school districts, like like the Hill? I know it's been a few years now, but I don't know if anyone's going through this right now or has gone through it recently, that we should or could contact just to have conversations about the process. Could we grab someone's process plan or process, you know, um, the project plan or however they, just so we can understand it. I think. I don't know about you guys, but it's not real, totally real to me yet. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's anyone who could or should speak with. Um, I can I can call up the uh, school board association and ask Barrett Christina if there's any recent examples of. I'm trying to think in my head who who recently has has gone through this. Um, one of the ones you gave us was, was it Milton Wakefield? Wakefield, Wakefield they, they, they joined up with uh, Governor Wentworth. Mm -hmm. They're contracting the service out now. They pulled out, and then they're just basically contracting the service with Governor Wentworth. So, I mean, that's a. Are they happy? I have no idea. <laughs> because they did not go to Governor. They did not go to those schools. They had their own. They're just contracting SAU services. They don't. Oh, they still go to their own. Schools. Yeah. That's one of those, right? Yeah, which is one of the models. Yeah, right. they don't go to Governor Wentworth. Right, they, they don't go to Governor They're just contracting the services up. Oh, so that would be, you know, interesting. To I can know. certainly find out information on that. Because that's, that's one of our choices. Mm -hmm. One of the options. So maybe if we could, you know, talk to or figure out what questions we'd have for each of those pieces, we could figure out what questions we'd like to ask. I guess it would be the school board that, that, that you communicate with. Because that's the constant there. Because the superintendent has changed because they contracted out. Right. It would be the, it would be the school board. And um, if Bob can make sort of the initial sort of sense of whatever we we as a we as a committee can decide if people want to go talk to their school board or or, or, or see if it's possible to talk to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're right. It's not. It doesn't necessarily work to talk with the superintendent, no. who's, who's, who's the contracted. Uh, right. Okay. Person necessarily. Well, I can I, I can ask the superintendent. How do you think it's working? What services are you yeah. providing? Yeah. How active are you in the district? Oh, Those types good. of things. I think that, that helps. Yeah. And then if we felt we wanted to, uh, Wakefield's bigger than us. At this point, I think we're going to be talking to Milton. Isn't it, isn't it, isn't it Milton? I'm trying to remember which one. Oh well. I think yeah. it's Milton. Uh, and that's small. It, it may be. It may be Milton. Contract the and the reason I think it's Milton is that they came and talked to some of our city yeah, board members might be about, right. about joining SAU right. 56. Uh, so. uh, in the end, chose chose not to simply because of the distance. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, stuff like that would, I yeah. think would be helpful to kickstart us. Right? The, what are some things we should be sure we about? Since we don't have a ton of time. All right, so Bob has a number of things on his list. I, I, um, <laughs> Plus a job. <laughs> <laughs> And meetings, <laughs> two, at least two or three, at an average of two or three nights a week. This is often more. You're standing back there. Huh? Yeah, how about uh, public comment? Mike? <laughs> Sorry. No, thank you very much. And the, yeah. you, these guys too? Public comment for anyone. The only thought I had as you guys were talking is about, um, you said what's important to the people that have kids in school. Um, to me, number one is curriculum. So what would we lose if we contract that service out? Do we lose control of the curriculum? Because you mentioned the superintendent does have some control over that. Yeah, I would say to that you don't lose any control over the curriculum because ultimately, you know, it, it's up to a school board oversight. It's up to your building administration. Uh, it's up to your leaders, uh, teacher leaders in the building. So I don't think that, that the process that you get there might look a little different 
but losing control. You know, even if you're contracting your service out elsewhere, uh, it may look a little differently how you accomplish that in your building. Um, but I would assume that let, let's just, and I'm just picking it because it's next door. Let's say you contracted service with Dover. Uh, if you were asking for um, curriculum assistance, then I would assume that that's going to be more tacked onto your bill. If it's just basic overview, overseeing of your uh, contracts, negotiations, school board meetings, those types of things, I, I would think that that would be one fee. And then if you, if, you know, it's probably going to come down to a, like an a la carte menu um, of what what you would pay for. And I just bring it up as something to when you look at what the average voter is going to look at. They don't have all the information that you have. And so that could be a real fear of people like, hey, we contract out to Marshwood for something. Are we going to lose, you know, are we going to follow Marshwood's curriculum now completely? Well, I think that's a good point. It could almost come into, like, you know, frequently asked questions, you know, in terms of, you know, what are the questions that the community has, and then here are the answers to it. I think definitely the need to communicate support. And that's one of concerns. the reasons why a requirement of this process is that you hold um, public hearings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And should that be, Judy, something we should do even before it's finalized? In other words, it's not the final thing, here's what we're going to do, and everybody raises their hands a whole upset about it. But almost have a preliminary one to say, here's what we're going, here's what we're doing, nothing is in, yeah. you know, in stone. And that's but up, what that's are up, your that's up to us as a committee yeah. to decide that. I think, I think that would be, you, I think it would. be a good yeah, idea. You so. can certainly have more, um, but the time that's frame, with it, it, it is detailed out here on how, how how soon before the final plan is developed that you need to have public hearings? That you have, that you're legally required to, but right. it doesn't mean to gain that, feedback. That, if, that if we wanted to get more feedback as a committee that we couldn't hold a, a public hearing. Okay. Right. I think one of the things that, that is going to remain difficult is, is, is reminding people this has nothing to do with the children's education in general. Right. It's just a matter of, uh, yeah. But the only thing I ask is, is that if the SAU does divide up, doesn't Rollinsford own a share of the actual building too? No. I believe they bought it jointly. No. No. No? The building itself is the property of Summersford. And we and, and and they do not charge Rollinsford any rent. Well, like you said before, the contents of the building. Yeah. There's some percentage we've, of that. Yeah, we, we've paid for we've paid for contents. Yeah. We've paid for the upkeep. Yep. of the building and, 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 and uh, heating and utilities and everything. Right. All, that's part of our, part of our that's, that 20. that's our 16 percent I mean and maybe this historic but just curious on the the board makeup nine nine Rollins, Summersworth five Rollinsford I mean that seems to be in Rollinsford's advantage considering how much we pay is that part of the problem it's that they feel that it's that Rollinsford is overweighted in their board representation versus their percentage of the overall That was SAU mentioned budget. in a discussion at one point. Okay. And I will, um, one of the reasons I was so surprised last September is that our board had already had some, some preliminary discussions about let's talk with Summersworth about if it's easier, kind of cutting back our presence, cutting back our, you know, we don't need to hold the uh, ch the, the chair every other year. Mm -hmm. We're really not interested in that necessarily. Yeah. You know, we, we, and then, all, and then we, before we even could get to that point, yeah. um, this came about, and therefore we never had those discussions. With Sounds them. like Congress. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? So if, if, if we don't meet Summersworth's timelines, they have their plan, ex you know, they have their plan completed by December. But we're not there yet, for whatever reason, hypothetically. What what happens? The, the state board would, let's just, hypothetically, they, they come forward and say, we're going to pull out. And these, and the state board is going to say, okay, that makes sense for you. What about okay. Rollinsford? And in their plan, they need to identify reasonable options that, they're not going to say, you need to go to this uh, uh, SAU or this district, what they're going to say is these are the five options that they could explore. Right. And then it would, if the board approves it and the city approves it, then it would be up to Rollins for to explore those options and come up with an option to. So, they, so they've 
we were estranged from them at that point. We we're kind of without a superintendent. No, not yet. Not yet. The board, the state board, is not just going to say, "Oh, we're yeah, all set yeah, here. You're on your own." Yeah, um, they're, they're, they're not. They're not going to yeah. do that. And okay. and it, you know, you're. It will be at least through July first of twenty twenty. That's the date. But I thought, Shelley, where you were going is, is there a fifth option, head in the sand, right? Because <laughs> no, if, I don't like no, that no, too. no. But uh, right, if we, if we don't do anything, in other words, if there wasn't the foresight of the board to to do this committee, Summersworth is going to come up with X number of options. The state's going to say those are all great. Rollins for go do something. July 2020, we haven't done anything. Do they, does the state go back to the Summersworth and say you have to continue supporting them for? I'm sure there would be a deadline. Would that be really the process then that would happen? Well, I mean, I guess it, I don't know, um, but the ultimate default option with this would be that you would have to, in my mind, and I'm just thinking through this on the fly. Um, the ultimate default option would be that you would have no say and have to pay for uh, services from Summersworth until a point in time that you've got a, a different one in place. Right. Um, I don't believe the state is going to say, if you don't have it by such and such a deadline, you're on your own. So then by default we would have moved into the contract SAU service. Uh, I believe that's probably that. what, would, what would happen. I think we're going to vote on uh, that uh, option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's good to well, have odd numbers. <laughs> 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 we have, we have <laughs> more information. But is, so is that an option too to renegotiate with a, with Summersworth and say if we draw, say we're not going to chair every year, you can chair every year, or we're sending only three people instead of five. I think like, it's is an that, option. I, I think it's an option. I don't know. Right. We, have, we have not had any joint discussion. We're having the discussion. Yeah. Yes. I think that that would be a, a great piece of a discussion if you were to get um, either your two committees together or liaisons from yeah. your committee for discussion. I think that that would be a good example of discussions that you have. And what could it look like? If, what, what might work if we just if Right. What would make you happy? I mean, I think that having having obviously sat in both committees, I, I think that there is an appetite to eventually get either the two committees together or or okay. representatives That's from the two committees yeah. together. I heard that here. I heard that there. Um, so I think that you know once you once you get a couple meetings deep here and get some information and have some some conversations and thoughts. Um, that's why I'm saying probably in the. July time frame, right. you know, you'd be you'd have enough information and enough discussion to have a a, a good cohesive meeting. So um, at this point, we'll we'll try to wrap this up now in the next few minutes. It's, it's, it's been a long week for everyone, rainy week. Um, Bob's going to send out the, the 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 SAU services, not just the superintendent services, but the SAU okay. services, correct? Yep. Um, for us to all review. Um, and I think rank them in terms of administrative services, not how it might affect students. It's not basically those services. I'm going to say don't affect students. I hate to say it that way, but it's not. Uh, is that accurate? Or um, it, it's accurate to the extent that I think that the, any. I don't want people to get nervous mm -hmm. that something is going to be a wholesale change here at mm -hmm. RGS. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what your decisions are, you can the board can make decisions to make sure that that doesn't happen. So yes, I think that's fair. That you know it should be on the on the business services on the on the um, you know it's basically the running of the business aspect of of your school system. That's that's what an SAU does. Does it make sense if you have that electronically, just for ease of use? Would it make sense if, if I could, I'd be willing to do this, put it into like a Google uh, survey so we can force rank it and add comments so we can have it all together so we can look at all that data? I don't know if you guys would be willing to do that. I'm just thinking yeah, no, it would be helpful to have it in front of us yeah. as an artifact. 
When you see the list, you may be sorry you suggested that, but uh, <laughs> everyone's going to do it. So if we're going mean, to look at it, we might as well do something so we can do something with well, the information. Yeah, why don't, when he sends the list, why don't you take a look and see what you think about how easy that might be to okay. do it that way? Because I'm sure he, it's he, extensive. He, yeah, it, it'll be sent as a doc. Or an Excel. Or an Excel. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I have it as an Excel. I know I have it as a PDF. I can on PDF. Oh, yeah. okay. oh I love technical people. You can hear it. Okay. Perfect. I'm glad you can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Now it's on video on YouTube. Great. All right, so that comes out. Well, I was going to say also, does it make sense for the, other, for the whole board to also look at that and rank them? I mean, they're going to have a much better opinion about this than me. Just like some parents are going to have a different view of some of these things. Just maybe to get a broader picture of, of what's important. So I'm not advocating. There are two board members here. So is that we, can, we can do it. We can. So. Yeah. Okay. I think that I really do think that's okay. Okay. Does it make sense for us at this point to do? I, I mean, I think we have three people here from the community, which is great. Um, but does it make sense for us to start that communication and education process as we learn? I know it's early, it's really early, but you know, it is just the business side of this. This is what the SMU does. Even simple stuff like that, does it make sense for us to start communicating? I, I yes. think it would be great, and I, I, but how is the best way, I mean, for instance, uh, what was it Joe said, frequently asked questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, where could we have that that's available to everyone? Well, we could send it home with the kids. <laughs> once the sheet, once frequently asked questions are written up, you know, whatever, couldn't we send it home? Well, that only goes to a certain part mm -hmm. of our community. Right, and then yeah. the rest of it could very be on the, <laughs> the town website. <laughs> the town website. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. that you're, that's a very good point. But, you know, one of the things we should probably come up with is a communication plan, which isn't yeah, communi only not what we have to do by next year, but... What, what, yeah, what would make sense every month we should? I know I, I'm on, like, as an example, the Dover website. They all the stuff they do there. They send out, they do a very nice job of communicating what's going on with that whole thing they're doing on the river. So that's, that's a good idea. Yeah, so one of the things, so um, Bob's going to get that information, send it out as quickly as possible. Melinda is very good about getting the minutes typed up. And we talked a lot. <laughs> and, and perhaps if we can get those... Um, electronically, so that we're all looking at them as in draft form, not not you know before the meeting, like like I don't know in, within a, you know a week or so after. I don't. Is that what's what's push, what's pushing too hard, Melinda, for uh, having them out? You try to do them quickly, don't you? I've been asked to have them. I already quit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the latest will be Monday morning. Well, that's fine. I think I think if we have them, uh, you know, five, you know four, five or six business days after. The meeting. Yeah. Then we can go to <laughs> And then I think it's, it's, it would be fine for people who are interested to say, well, let, let's pull this out and make it a frequently asked question, and you know, because it's yeah. something we brought up three times or four yeah. times during this meeting ourselves, and um, we'll start pulling those together, and then we can talk about them and get the communication plan going in, that, in our next meeting. No, that's so. What's up? So people's calendars. We didn't want to impose upon anyone. So Looking at what a month or so? Are we looking at how long out? Or, or what worries me that there's kind of like a deadline. Understood. I know I understand. <laughs> I'd rather understand it first and then figure out. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, put the work in yeah. now, even with the summer coming too. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd rather put the work in now when it's. Yeah. <laughs> right. So this is May 1st. Um, so are you guys yeah. thinking like 15th or 27th yeah. of this one? Sure. How about 10 a.m. on the 15th? <laughs> I figured I'd try no, that. Sorry. I'm, I'm he's not He's actually kidding. serious, but the, yeah. 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 For the, the, the I would time, be. I, I would <laughs> Possibly be able to dial into a call <laughs> during the day, but definitely can't. I, I can't. <laughs> it was worth a shot. <laughs> yeah. 
It's always worth a shot. I can do earlier. If that's like five, five thirty, right? Do early or two. Mm. That's tough for me on a Wednesday. Unfortunately. Is there a day that would be good for earlier, say like a five thirty, and try and keep it to a relatively short meeting so we can get out and then have dinner? Tuesdays or Thursdays, but not on school board um, days would work for a little bit earlier, or Fridays, but that, that would be undesirable. Yeah. undesirable. <laughs> so the 14th at 5.30? Is that uh, give, give everyone enough time seven. to do it? Uh, that uh, that might interfere with uh, some other board meetings. Uh, isn't that school board? That's some mm -hmm. from school board. The fourteenth. Yeah. Is it oh, I believe it's some as were school board. But if we were out of here, the sixteenth or Thursday. Unfortunately, I can't. I'd like to go to a concert. <laughs> 21st. <laughs> it's the 21st on Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. When would be school board? Or the 23rd, Thursday that week. Yeah. We're just getting that that, that, that works tough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the 30th, Thursday. School concert. Here. Yeah. We could have music. <laughs> well, what about the 29? But we will get to back to the 630 like we did yeah. for this one. Yeah, of all the days I have a reservation. Well, let's keep it to the 15th. At least we'll, you know, meet again sooner than later. And yeah. Yes. And we'll go at 630. I could also do 6 if that's better. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Did we say 5.30 or did we say 6? 6. six. 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 On the 15th. 15th. I will not be here, but I'm only saying this because I, I, I'm going to be gone three weeks. So I, I, you know, I'm not oh, going to be around for whatever the next anyway. meeting's probably yeah. going to be anyway. Um, and that's fine. You'll all do great work. They all have much more of a chance to talk. <laughs> so the 15th at 6.30, is that? Uh, the 15th at 6 p.m. 6 o'clock. What day is that? It's a Wednesday. It's Wednesday. And so they'll be looking at um, discussing the SAU services and ranking, sort of, sort of ranking, getting a sense, and maybe uh, the things that are most important and, and if they're covered better. I guess they would be getting an opinion, probably mostly from Bob, on, on the, and, and anyone else who might have an opinion on it, whether they're covered best by uh, being on our own, contracting, um, whatever, those kinds of things. And I think to continue to think about um, a communication plan, obviously that's going to yeah. become very, very important, but also uh, thinking about how quickly we maybe can have a quick discussion with Bob. Um, Maybe a quick discussion before before be better, better, with with the Summersworth committee. Well, it does seem like the path of less, less, yes. less work, I guess, really, yeah. because yeah, you may you may be ready to <laughs> set that meeting after your next meeting, have another yeah. discussion, and then if you want to have a see if they'll do a, a meeting in early June. I mean, if, it, if we know right away after talking with them that it's off the table, that's helpful. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, right. or that's if true. Or it's on the table, right. then... Right. Is, is there a... Um, is that something we can broker, I guess, for us? And, um, you know, say that... I, I mean, I, I'd be comfortable saying, hey, we'd throw us some dates in the beginning of, you know, early to mid-June that we could catch up. Well, I just happen to have a withdrawal meeting tomorrow night um, in summer school. Nice. So if the committee would like me to do that, I can yeah. I can try to I, I can try to get some dates yeah. early June and that would be perfect. see if yeah. they're willing to do that. I think that would be perfect. I, I, I will share with all of you, and, and I will also share with the Summer School Committee. I, I'll be around um, after the second. I'll be around at that first meeting, so that's good. Um, um, I, I went through the process of 
higher involved, L looking for a superintendent, hiring an interim superintendent. I was very involved with it. Um, Aaron was very involved with it. Um, it took us it took us a year and a half to find Bob. It is it is hard it is hard to find good superintendents. And um, I, I I feel that we that the entire SAU is very lucky to have Bob as a superintendent. And one of the things that made me very sad to hear he'd been on the job three months when someone yeah. said we want to split. And I went what? And we finally <laughs> have this superintendent. So I mean I'd, I'd be happy to see what their thoughts might be. Yeah. I guess I'm a little confused. If they initiated the split, why would they want to take us back? I mean, we're just putting it out there. I guess we'll find that out. We'll find out. Sure. <laughs> they may not. They may not. I, you know. Um, I think the financial piece would be part of it. Yeah, it'd be now that they're getting into those details. That might be the only right. Right. factor. It's hard, to, it's hard to know. And do you think it's better with this meeting with all of us there, or are we talking about just, let's say, a, a small Trouble. subset, but there's a small yeah, subset, yeah. Okay. just to sit down and have a nice, honest talk about mm -hmm. what they're trying to achieve, how we can help them achieve it, that kind of thing? And it might, it might, uh, it might make sense to, to be a community member to a community member, not to have, uh, not necessarily to have any of the board members uh, there. To have the discussion, I think that might be helpful. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out. Yeah. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe the five of us. Yeah. And the, the five of them, presumably, right? They have four community members and a financial representative. Um, no, right? everybody has city council. Oh, yeah, city, city council. council. Yeah. Anyway, that detail could be worked out. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of details, who's going to be in charge of figuring out where the next meeting? <laughs> oh, oh, very good. Uh, it's a Wednesday night, so it's, I don't know if it's when it's uh, in two weeks. How often does PTO meet? I think it's monthly. Yeah, yeah it's not. First Wednesday of every month. Okay. okay. I mean, I know at times people have pulled together the some space down at the library. Is that in a possibility? And they've been very It flexible. is a possibility. Are people unhappy here? Like no, it doesn't the library matter. Here, if in the library here or if we're here? Here's um, where Okay. That doesn't matter. So, um, if, um, can, can you let Rich know, or yep. I'm, I'm happy to do it as well. So, yep. well, it'll either be in the library or here oh. in this room. The library, um, the Rollins room, the school. I'm office. sorry, the yeah. school yeah. Library. library. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I don't mean to make that. Um, the uh, only problem with the library is that we'll be sitting on stools with chairs that have no backs. What's up with here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We, Zen Den is good. We are people yes. <laughs> who like our backs. So. But I think you bring up a good point about the public library. That's, that that's they, what I was thinking about. It's a Just, public place, yeah. not the school. You know, maybe a little more neutral for it people. It is. There's also the, yeah, um, you think that's better? Yeah, the yeah. community room. Uh, down there, that's uh, right. adjacent to the library, mm -hmm. uh, which is it's true. Oh, yeah. set up specifically There's a lot more room there, so right. it's a big room. Yeah. So if people feel, if you'd rather meet there, uh, we're not, I'm just, I, yeah. that's kind of a thought. Yeah, I'm just trying to solve a space problem. Okay. So yeah. I, I know we've had some I'm stuff. Stand yeah, it's pretty easy. It's yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's all right. Mike wouldn't have to stand behind the board. <laughs> He could have stood over here. So, are, are, so, are, are, so, is that the preference that we go to the um, the Rollinsford Public Library? We'd have to make we'd have to make sure they have space. They're open, and, right? Uh, they don't to, need to be open. They don't need to. Yeah. Be open. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we have a man. We have a man with a key. <laughs> you have a key to the library. <laughs> I've got a key to the community room. Okay. Brian, Brian well, manages the, the he manages the bills, uh, the, the the mills. He, oh, okay. uh, oh, uh, oh, the, oh, he manages all the cutter well, family that's properties. That's suddenly much easier. Yeah. So, <laughs> to have it there. Yeah, all cool. right, then it will be at the uh, Rollinsford Public Library. Right. You don't have to tell Rich anything. Does it matter which way we come in? Can we come in by the water? The uh, easiest way is to drive around the back of the right. right. bar. Okay. okay, by the water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll uh, give you both directions. Thank you. We'll find it. Well, you'll find it. Oh, that's what you One say. One way or another. I'll say now. You'll love, you'll love the site words. down by the Salmon you, Falls. You can Google that. It's on Google Maps. Yeah. Couple quick questions. Is this going to be posted? And if so, where for the meeting? This one, this one should have been posted. It was posted. Mm -hmm. Where? So, 
That's the question. It was sent, it was sent, to, the the it was sent to the town hall and it was placed. No, because it wasn't. I didn't see it at the town hall Monday night. I, I, it's not your fault. Yeah. Yeah, I can double check. Okay. We posted the same. Facebook posts. I yeah. saw it in the schools. Uh, yeah, we tried to post it the same way. We posted it. Yeah, we, yeah, we, 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 it went to the same places to be posted as where we post all of our meetings. Okay. Yeah, yeah, especially if you want the if you want the public to be yeah. informed, you're going to have to put it at the town hall because there's a lot of people that don't come to the school. Right, right. Or get Facebook pages. Yeah. You said a couple questions. That was it. Okay. <laughs> okay. If it was posted, where? Uh, you know, there was announcements I get that the road's going to be closed and the. Yeah, it, 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 it got sent there as well. So we'll I didn't have, get we'll that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't yeah, to, I don't think it went out over the town. No, it didn't. The school board postings don't either. So no. Yeah. We'll, we'll see if we can. Uh, let's see if I can. No. Oh, no. Tia doesn't. It's Caroline and, I mean, you know, one, one post of the town hall and one post yeah, yeah. of the town so We'll see what we can do about that as it happens. So I, don't, I don't think the problem is that you're involved, but we'll, we'll take a look and see. I'll, I'll see if we can get it. Thank you. Uh, all right. And I wish you all a very good meeting the next time. I look forward to reading the minutes from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.